Okay, so today we're going to explore the Keynesian long run aggregate supply curve. The Keynesian long run aggregate supply curve differs from the classical model in the sense that he assumes that you can have output gaps in the long run. But we can deal with that at another time. What I want you to understand is that there are three sections on the LRIS curve. Let's start by drawing it. So on the y-axis, we're going to have the price level. The price level is basically a measure of inflation. And on the x-axis, we're going to have real output. You can also write real GDP, by the way. That's completely fine. And that is a measure of economic growth. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll draw the LRAS curve. Now, the LRAS curve is actually a curve that you have seen drawn in a different way before. What was the very first diagram that you ever saw in economics? Most of you are screaming supply and demand. That is not true. That is not the first diagram that you saw. The first diagram that you ever saw in economics is actually a PPF. This is pretty much a PPF because a PPF maps out the maximum level of output that our economy is currently capable of producing with all the goods available to it, with all the factors of production that it has at its disposal. Well, looking at our LRIS curve, you see the point where it becomes perfectly inelastic, where it does that. That represents the maximum level of output that your economy is capable of producing at this moment in time. So the factors that shift the PPF curve out also shift the LRIS curve out. So for example, if there's technological improvements, LRIS would shift out. If there's a natural disaster, LRIS would shift inwards. Now, we're always aiming for the top grade. So in order to do that, I always want you to be able to talk about the LRIS curve in terms of the technical terminology. So we're going to split it up into three sections. Section A, where it's perfectly elastic. Section B, where it's starting to bend. And finally, section C, where it is perfectly inelastic. Let's start with section A. If you're at section A, do you think your economy is doing well or badly? Well, it's not doing particularly well because it's pretty far away from the maximum level of output that it is capable of producing. If we were to think of that in terms of a PPF, where are we? We are inside the PPF. So that's not great. The name for section A is spare capacity. And spare capacity is characterized by the following things. One, stagnant economic growth, next to no growth. Number two, high levels of unemployment. There are loads of people that don't have a job. And number three is something called idle machinery, spelled I-D-L-E. Idle is basically that machinery is just sitting there, not being used. So that's not great. So that's spare capacity. Now let's skip for a second from A all the way to the other extreme to C. If A is spare capacity, what's C? C is full capacity. If you're at full capacity, it means that your economy is producing the maximum level of output that it is capable of when all of its factors of production are efficiently employed. In other words, you're on the PPF. Now let's go back to B. B has a bit of a fancy name. The name for B is bottleneck territory. And I always want you to remember it through this example. Imagine that you own a nightclub. One of the most important people that you hire is the DJ. Let's call him DJ Frank. DJ Frank comes up to you and is like, hey, I want to hire a salary, otherwise I quit. Well, you have two options here. Scenario number one is to be like, bye-bye, I'm going to get someone else. And you probably do that if you're at spare capacity because there are so many DJs available because there's high levels of unemployment. But we're no longer at spare capacity anymore. In fact, we're starting to get closer and closer to full capacity. There are hardly any DJs available. What are you going to do to the wages that you pay DJ Frank? You're going to have to, begrudgingly, accept the higher wage request. As a result, what are you going to do to the price that you charge people at the door? You're going to raise your price. And you can see that at section B of the diagram, you start to get inflation in the economy. Obviously, by the way, bear in mind, this isn't just DJs and nightclubs. It happens across the whole economy. But at bottleneck territory, this is what's happening. Workers' bargaining power is increasing because labor has now become more scarce. As a result, wages start to go up, and as a consequence, we start to get inflationary pressure. That is the three sections of the Keynesian long-run aggregate supply curve. Check out some of our other videos, subscribe to our channel, and we'll hope to see you again soon.